The handkerchief came back out, but this time Casey simply waved it around. He left everything to a total stranger. His entire estate. I don't even know whether Liam realises it. It's not something I want to tell Liam over the phone and he's yet to pay me a visit. He shook his head. I've tried calling this other person numerous times, but every time she hangs up on me. Casey's gaze landed firmly on Siobhan, and it almost felt as if he was accusing her of something. A total stranger. Who was she? Could it be the woman in the floppy yellow hat? We're going to need the name of that beneficiary, McDara said. Casey nodded. Perhaps you can help me locate her, he said. When I asked John who this woman was, and why on earth he was leaving everything to her, he was very cagey. How so? Siobhan asked. He told me it was personal and he didn't need to explain himself. Siobhan retrieved a notepad and biro. Name, she said. Casey cleared his throat and then opened a folder. I don't know if this is a test, is it? His eyebrows arched up. Macdara leaned in. Why would we be testing you? Your name is O'Sullivan, is it not? It is, Siobhan said. She was ready to throttle him herself. And you are related to a Gronya O'Sullivan? Siobhan felt as if she'd been slapped. What does my sister have to do with any of this? I'm surprised you asked me about John's visit before Vera Cowley was murdered, Casey said. I thought you were asking about his second visit. Mr. Casey, I'm about to grab you by the shirt collar and haul you into the station for questioning, McDara said, coming to his feet. He leaned over the desk. Now stop dodging every question we ask and start making some sense. Casey swallowed hard and nodded. He gestured for McDara to sit back down. 